opportunity. But I, I just want to serve you until it's time to go home. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be a bold witness. I want to stand. And I want people to know that if they see me, I'm standing for you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not a bully, Lord, but I don't like bad, evil people. This is my prayer, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeeming. Well, I jumped up here. I'm, I'm bouncing with, with Tiffany. <laughs> I forgot. I need less. <laughs> I still young. Okay. First, give it out to God who is the creator, our provider, our banner, our healer, and our peace. The one true God who is sometimes called Elohim, uh, Adonai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. I am Reginald Miles. I am a deacon at Allen Temple, and I've been going to Allen Temple 40 years. And I've been a deacon for 32. I was a very young man when I committed my little life to God. And I'm not ashamed of that. Every year, every great hair on my face, I honor it. Because I earned every, every one of them. And uh, my wife is here with me, like she always is. My sweet Dolores Lyle. Uh, my mother-in-law who lives with us, Emily Gibson. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I count it all as joy to be asked to share some time with you this morning because you are a very unique and blessed congregation of believers. You're becoming known all over the United States. All over the United States. You're becoming known as a small church that has a great love for God Amen. and a great love for justice. All over the United States, they're asking the question, where is the bride from? What church are they from? This is what's being asked all over. I get around a lot, and folks call and say, who are they? The way. They're the way. They're the way. So you are the little church with a great love for God. And your leadership through the Reverend Michael McBride. I thank God for Sharice McBride. I thank God for, um, to, for Deacon James McBride and for Mother McBride. We have in that house. God just exploded in that house. Yeah. Just exploded in that house. We thank God for Pastor Donald Battle and Dedrick, right? The new parents of the new church member and Pastor Teddy and the lovely family. God bless you. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Christ and from our Temple Baptist Church congregation. Yes, God has selected you and your pastor will play significant roles in the confronting of this great evil in this generation. Reverend McBride and also Reverend Ben McBride also and all of the others who are on the front lines are standing up for righteousness. Give me a double consciousness. Make me thirsty for righteousness. Is that how I went? Kind of like how I went. I gotta remember that. Okay, uh, because they they are standing up for justice and the recognition of God in our nation. Yeah. In many ways, this very time is similar to times gone by, like when the Lord selected Gideon, who was a reluctant judge, to go fight the Amal Amalekites and the Mennonites, but he did. And in time earlier, uh, more recent, I mean, when Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and Dr. Ralph Abernathy were called to face the evils of American apartheid, segregation, and Jim Crow, and lynching. They too were reluctant leaders. In Birmingham, they didn't walk into the meeting of the pastors and said, we'll do the civil rights uh, movement. No, they said, we're not gonna do it. Uh, we're going to give it to little Martin who just got out of town. Those are the facts. And they grew into the ministry and became historical giants. <clears throat> and you know, with Gideon, he was, you know, at, at the threshing well, hot.
hiding from the Malachites when it came in to every, every uh, six or seven months to steal all the people's food. As a foreshadowing of the power of God that's emanating in this place, this very ground is holy ground, which you are erecting. This very ground. I was a policeman uh, in this town for 20 years. I rose from uh, become a janitor. I started working at the Berkeley Police Department as a janitor. And I worked up from a janitor to become uh, a captain. In, the, in, in this police department, in this town. And I had this area as my span of control. I had 15 officers in the evening watch, and this was the most disgusting place in Berkeley. Yeah. You guys look at it now and go like, oh, I just can't believe it. Well, I feel the same way. I can't believe it. <laughs> this place was a massage parlor. We call them whole houses. That's what it was. This place right here, right across the street on the side of the track, was Abel Massage Park. There was liquor stores across the street where the Jewish synagogue is. That was J.D. Liquors. Uh, up the street was a nightclub, and every weekend they were shooting somebody. It was unbelievable in this strip. They had more pimps walking down the street than, uh, than, than, than anything else. Everybody was moving, and I had to try to manage it. I remember sitting in my car, praying, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I didn't know, <coughs> little did I know, that the Lord had already was moving. Just like you plant a seed in the ground, and you don't know what's going to come up. You like to have a little lemon tree, but then you don't see nothing. You're watering it, and etc. and finally a little something breaks through. You come back five, six later, years later, you thought that little tree has always been there. Well, this is how this place is. This, I tell you, is holy ground. Amen. And you all, you all know it. You have been, who are here in this congregation, have been called to be in this congregation. Yes. You ought to be wedded to it. You ought to, you ought to hold it close to you. Because God wants to use you for the changing of America. Word of God. Let's get your Bibles out if you have it. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 11 through 20. Uh, name of this sermon on the full armor of God. I'm sure many of you have read this uh, pericope many, many times. I love it. Say amen when you have it. Amen. All right. It says, put on the full, starting at verse 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the full arm of God so that you may be able to resist the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your lions with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayers and petitions, pray at all times in the Spirit, with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on behalf and the utterance may be given to me and open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, which I am an ambassador in chains, that I am proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul is right in saying, we in a battle. Yeah. And we in a battle with evil. And this evil is not evil that is human manufactured. Right. This right. evil is spiritual yeah. wickedness. Yeah. Yeah. There's wickedness in your neighborhood, yeah. but it's also in the area where rules and yeah. authority yeah. reside. Yeah. Right. This evil is, is, is persevering kind of evil. And you must understand, you're going to need something to fight with. Now yeah. let's get this fight thing straightened out. The battle is yours to do what? To stand. Right. Okay. You're supposed to appear yeah. on the front line yeah. and stand up for Jesus. Yeah. God is the fighter of the battle. 
Amen? Amen. You can't get enough bullets. You can't get enough uh, bulletproof vests. You can't go to the politicians and make enough rules and regulations and laws. You can't guilt trip people who are evil to turn around. You can't do that. Only the hand of God has the power to do that. Keep in mind, this place we're in is holy ground. It was a place of ill repute. Right. Look at it now. Yeah. Nothing we can do to turn this place around. Why? Because we're making too much money. Yeah. Right. Way too much money. Too many people wanted it here. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They didn't mind it being here. They didn't care who's being abused here. Yeah. Right. You understand? Yeah. Only God moved. I know, because I was out there in the car uh, with my 15 officers, and I said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pick out one pimp a week. And he ain't making no money. What, 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 what you mean by that? We're going to walk with everyone we think is with him. So she can't make no money. So we did that. We employed that plan. And the guy stopped me over J.D. Liquors. Told me to take my gun belt up. Said he was going to whoop me. And he looked like he just came out to join in the same way. So big 16 inch arm, 17 inch arm. And I'm looking at him and I said, man, you think I'm crazy? I'm not taking no gun belt off. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get about 15 guys down here and we're gonna change your situation. <laughs> we didn't have no problems. Yeah. Had that been today's law enforcement, that man would have been shot 16, 17 times. Amen? Yeah. That's how things have changed. So, what is he? If there is a philosophical question that has been debated throughout centuries and all throughout time, it has been this one. It is, what is the existence of God? I take the position as a bold man and believer of the, of the one true God, that God does exist. Yes. I take the position that it's impossible to please God without faith. Right. You must believe that God is, right. and that yes. he will reward those who diligently seek him. Yes. So you that church on Mother's Day and Easter and Christmas and they can deal with Big Mama of faith. Amen. That ain't, that ain't, that's not oh, worship. Right. That's not worship. That's yeah. hypocritical and it, and it does not get you, you, you might as well be as far away from God as you think you are close to him. Yeah. You can't think of all the rational issues why you don't want to come to church. Every rational issue you get around Saturday night you better understand, Lord, take this from me. Take it from me, because I'm getting up Sunday morning. Now, in my household, we didn't have no choice. My mother used to tell me, Reggie, and my brother Ricky, and I is, let me tell y'all something. Your Saturday nights are dictated by your Sunday morning. So, y'all gonna get in the car and go wherever, we are gonna be up at 8 o'clock. And that was the situation. So I went through life all the way through trying to do both. I'm going to be there on Sunday, but Saturday night I'm in it. I'm on top of it and I'm chasing it. Even when I was a deacon at Allen Temple, we loved them 49ers. Yeah, come on. Dolores' uh, uh, daddy and Emily's husband, God bless him, he's a wonderful man. They had season Tim his brother had season tickets. So when he got wheelchair bound, he couldn't go. So he handed him tickets off. Not to his son, to his, his daughter. I was just so happy. Because I'm a 49 er fan, so I loved him. I said, oh, dope. Because he had gone to the end. What we sitting, though, we sitting on section seven. Roll five. Man, I could hear Ronnie Lott talk.
Sunday school next to my class that I teach, class five. He said, Dick, everybody knows what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to ask the Lord to take that from me. Yeah. So I did. Years so went by, and uh, the Lord said, we might have to take no, I'm done. And that's how God moves in your life. That's how subtle evil can be in your life. And it, and, but the Lord can remove these things. Consequently, yeah. God, God is not the one who commits the evil or even allows the evil because God has given us free will. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we have the moral uh, uh, ability to choose to do things that are wrong and things that are evil. But evil is profound malevolence. It's an apostasy. Big word just means stepping away from God. It means making God doesn't exist. And arguing those crazy things like, well, if God exists, why are babies dying? That's silly kind of foolish argument. The issue is, is God real in your life? Does he, God mean anything to you? So, so, evil is the total disregard for God and God's precepts. It's the merciless causing of pain and suffering. It is the inhumane treatment of humans and animals and the earth. It is dehumanizing and it's abusing anything you can for what? For greed or because it feels good or tastes good or you want to do it. It is evil and it was evil when Michael Brown was walking down the street and accused of jaywalking and ultimately was shot seven times and two times in the forehead. It was evil that he was, uh, uh, that, that the officer never stopped shooting even when Michael Brown had his hands up. It is evil when in Beaver Creek, uh, Ohio, the police department gunned down John Crawford, a 22 year old man who was in Walmart, a store trying to buy a, a pellet gun for his oldest son as a birthday present. So he's leaning on the gun with the barrel down on the gun, leaning on it, talking on the phone to his wife and mother when the uh, Beaver Creek police come in and shoot him dead without allowing him to, um, to, to surrender. Now why did that happen? Because this fool, this evil man named Ronald Rich called, saw him in a store, walking around with a pellet gun, saw it was a toy gun, but yet he called 911 and said, there's a black man in here waving a gun at their children, and he's gonna shoot. He Maybe he's trying to rob the place. How do we know that? We have the 911 tape. And the man lied. He's come back on, on television and said, yeah, I lied about that. But John Crawford is dead. That is evil. It's evil when Eric Gardner in, uh, in Staten Island, New York, is murdered by NYPD <clears throat> by road cops in an attempt to arrest him for allegedly selling uh, cigarettes, uh, a, a single cigarettes. And uh, so the cops come and say, hey man, you, 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 are you selling cigarettes? He said, no. And let me tell you, selling the cigarettes are a misdemeanor. We haven't done nothing wrong. And so, uh, they, they get around him, seven officers get around him, and while one of them get behind him, he grabs him in an illegal chokehold and brings him to the ground. Eric Gardner was over 300 pounds. He hit the ground. He's heard saying on the, on the film, the video film of the whole operation, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And not one of the other officers says, okay, that's enough. Let, let go of his throat. And it was a sergeant there, a female sergeant. And she said that look. And they choked the life out of that man. It's evil, I tell you. It's evil when Oscar Grant was taken off a of bar and uh, for an alleged fight on the train. Now, I was the consultant on that case hired by Carol Ward Allen, and who was then the president of the Bark Board of Directors. And she had me come in to do preliminary investigation and, and, and review the police department and tell them what to do. She said, Reggie, I don't, I don't even know what to do with this. You think this thing is going to blow up? I say it's going to be so big, it's unbelievable. They kept denying me until I got a rap uh, uh, record, a tape from a guy in France who was rapping in French 
language about Oscar Grant. See, it's international. This is not a, a, a slight thing. So they said, well, what is he saying? So we gave him the lyrics in English. They said, oh my God, this thing can blow up. Yeah, it's gonna blow up. So we find out on the tape that they bring Oscar Grant off the, uh, the train. They lay him down on the stomach. They put a one handcuff on his right hand. And then another officer comes and puts his left knee on his neck. And Johannes Mercerly stands over him, straddles him like this, pulls out his nine millimeter, aims at his back, boom, and shoots him in the back, blows out his heart. And then he tells this evil lie that he thought it was a taser. Now I'm going to tell you all, if you had your mama's uh, skillet, you know that one y'all just fried eggs, one that one that big one she had. If, if you closed your eyes and I put that skillet in your hand, if I told you what you're holding is the receiver of the telephone, you say no, it's not. <laughs> Why? It's, it's got to be something because that's for the nine millimeter. Nine millimeter weighs about seven to eight pounds. Uh, a taser is lighter than this microphone. So he lied. They lied. They covered up the lie. And they got it all exposed about this uh, unbelievable sin, this unbelievable evil. So why did they shoot him? The Johannes first thing, why did you shoot him? He can't tell you himself. But they watched him die on that land. Watched him die on that land. Disgusting. His mother, who's his mother? His mother's an evangelical preacher. She's a Holy Ghost preacher. His buddies, they all grew up in this church in Hayward together. Evangelical church together. What were they doing? They went out on, on New Year's Eve. And his mother enforced them. Told them, don't drive. Because you know you guys might do something out there. We'll get some alcohol in you. Ride the train home. I'll pick you up in the street. <laughs> and, they, and they stop them and do this. So what should we do? Those of us who believe that this is evil. And that this evil is abounding more and more everywhere in these United States. Well, the scripture says for us to put on the full armor of God. Because the fight is not a fight of flesh and blood. But it is against rulers and against powers and against the world forces of darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness. Consequently, we must turn to God. Oh, it would bless my heart if churches all over America would be full again. It would bless my heart if all these folks who think they know so much about everything, uh, sociology, philosophy, psychology, would just come on back to Jesus. It would, it would make my heart feel well if they just said, you know, I have a thirst for righteousness. I, I have a thirst for righteousness. You can't find righteousness away from the cross. You may find something that may be right, but it's not God's righteousness. I just want to be real with you now. Yes. Consequently, turning to God and coming to him, to church and establishing a relationship with our Heavenly Father, and for me and my house, is through Jesus Christ. But you know what? I ain't got no fight with no Muslim. I ain't got no fight with no Buddhist. I ain't got no fight with no Hindu. You know why? I'm not God. God said, leave that to me. I'll separate it. You just, uh, uh, like my mom used to say, look, God wants us to, he's going to take care of life now. And so I ain't got no fight with nothing. I'm going to find Fine. That's what you believe? Fine. But for me and my house, it's all about Jesus. Because that's the invitation yeah, I got. Yeah. I didn't get no invitation saying, come join uh, a Muslim uh, theology or a Buddhist theology. The invitation I got was from Jesus himself. Mm. Come unto me, all you who yeah, are yeah. burdened and heavy laden, and I'll be And, and, and 
yes. of the world. Yes. To confound the wise. That's why every time they say, who is Mark McBride? I, I get that. I get that. Yeah, okay. Well, why don't you leave? Want to meet him? Did you meet any of his brothers? Did you meet any of his sisters? <laughs> meet him. Just meet him. And I guarantee you, you will be amazed what God can do. What God can do. And all of you have been caught up in it. All you who come here and worship here, the member of this congregation, you are a part of that uh, commissioning by God and the Holy Spirit. So we can't be afraid. We have to pursue the truth. We have to pursue the truth. But what is the truth? Well, I'll tell you this. The truth is that African American males are being executed, hunted down in the streets by road cops. That's the truth. The truth is that none of them have done any felonies. None of them have robbed anybody, stabbed anybody, killed anybody, uh, threatened anybody. All of one was walking down the street with flip flops, jaywalking. The other one was trying to get home. The other one was trying to buy a, 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 a toy for his child. It does not matter, I tell you. Things are changed now. Yeah. Things are changed so yeah. wrong yeah. that you can't even surrender now. That's the truth. You better believe it. That's the truth. And so we got to stop something. Are all cops rogue cops? No. The truth is that all cops are not rogue cops. But the rogue cops that are in the police department do commit evil in the name of law enforcement. It is also true that the police associations and the police union, they get out and spend all their money to defend the worst kind of guy. <laughs> I mean, the guy who said, man, look, we got him on film. He, he didn't, well, I don't know if you've seen this most recent one. Guy sitting in the, in the passenger seat. The police walk up to him and say, give me your driver's license. He said, I ain't driving. <laughs> why? Why? You know, my wife got the wife. She drove. Give me your driver's license. You don't have to do that. The law doesn't allow them to do that. I know the law. That is not right. So they break the window and tase him several times with his children in the back seat. I'm telling you, it's evil. It is evil and it's wrong. It's also the truth that I, I said earlier that you cannot surrender and I believe that. It's also true that uh, black males uh, in the recent two, uh, 20 years or so have died or have a more greater chance to be killed by the police 21 times more than their white counterparts. It's true that a police agency refused to keep accurate records on officer-involved shootings because they know of the disparate treatment. Now, the city of Los Angeles hasn't reported to the federal government, Department of Justice, on its officer-involved shooting. They call it OIS. They haven't reported OIS numbers in three years. The city of New Orleans ain't done it in a decade because you can't force them to do it. The department just, just politely requests that you send us the document. So your pastor went to the Department of Justice because Michelle Alexander's uh, uh, husband uh, runs a department in the Department of Justice, an, uh, an agency within it, and, and he came up with this idea. Hey, well, how about this? How about forcing them to report the certificate? And you hold back uh, the, their grant money. It's called the Burns Jag Grant Money. Why don't, we, why don't we say you can't get that money that they count on every year unless they report the certificate? <laughs> Guess what? You don't have to go to Congress and ask them to do it. The president don't have to sign anything to do it. All we needed was the Attorney General to say, okay, fine, and write an order for it to be done. And guess what? He refused to do it. Wow. He refused to do it. So, you know, so you, in this work, you're going to be frustrated. So that's why you have to know the Lord. Because sometimes the only thing to sue you is somebody laying hands on your forehead and praying for you. He said, I understand how long this is. But soon and very soon, your change is going to come. The truth is, is that the majority of white Christians prefer to ignore the slaughter that we're enduring because most of them don't care. So let's get over it. They don't care. They don't care. So I'm not running behind some white folks. Please care. They don't care. I'm not looking for that to happen. We got to get at them in a different way. Yet these folks, these very same folks who don't care, they will be in 
church today, come on, how many say love the Lord? And that amazes me. Because how can you love God who you have not seen? And you don't love your brother who you see every day. God rejects that. God says that's hypocrisy. And he doesn't value that kind of love. Now when you talk to them about that, they do like this. <laughs> and then they want to walk away from it. Like you pulling off a scab. This is just the truth. It's just the naked truth. Just the naked truth. Y'all know where that phrase came from, naked truth? Yeah. You know, you know God told Jeremiah to go down to the temple gate. And the temple gate is where politicians where they made decisions at, at the gate. And so he said, go down to the gate and take up all your clothes yeah. and tell them what I said. Now why would he stand out there naked telling the truth? Because he because these folks will walk away. They just ignore you. They just ignore you. Over and over. I got a constant mind with them saying, being said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You just gotta stay persistent. Don't get frustrated. But why won't they listen to us? I, I don't know. They didn't listen to Mark. And they showed up, didn't listen to Jesus. So, so this is the fact. That's the truth. It's also the truth that we must pray for the safety for their safety, who are on the front lines and their protection. We must also give our tithes to this house. We must also contribute to this house, to support this house, because you are in the midst of doing something that's greater than you ever thought you would do. You have to do that. We must demand to know the truth. We must research the truth. We must speak truth to power. And we must live the truth. So yeah. if there's any hypocrisy in your life, ask the Lord to help you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, what is unrighteousness? In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it states, He made him who knew no sin to be the sin bearer for us, right. that we might become righteous of God in him. Jesus, the innocent one, took upon himself the sins of the world so that we may be holy and acceptable to a righteous God. Secondly, righteousness means to be in a right relationship with God. Consequently, you must become a regular worshiper. Right relationship with God, one who must strive to be obedient. And you know, when you're not following the word of God, that's called disobedience. Yeah. And I understand how that is because generally, we do sin because we like it. Right. It don't taste bad. Sin tastes good. Right. It don't feel bad. Sin feels good. Right. Matter of fact, you don't make a whole lot of money off of sin. So, so it, it's hard. This is, if you are confined to the rules of the world, you will be a sinner of this world. It requires you to walk away from that kind of stuff. And you can. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so uh, Spartan like. You don't have to be a stoic. You don't have to like me having no fun. You know, I can't do nothing. No, it don't have to be like that. But I guarantee you, you have to say, Lord, is this for me? Yeah. Right. And if the Lord said no, it's not for you, then you step away from me. Right. I don't make no decisions that I have to God. Every time I have a decision, and I don't need no huge decision. Like, should we buy this house or that house? I'm talking about, where should I park today? <laughs> should I wear the black shoes or the, or the brown shoes? I want to, you know, the God I serve does not turn off. He's not like a light switch. Come on over here, Lord. I need you now. Come on, show me what to do. God is talking to you all the time. Now, some of y'all have heard it said often that, you know, I ain't heard from the Lord. Wait, no, you have
just takes a while. And when you're 14, 15, you, you know everything. <laughs> Let's be real. And you don't know some things, you know everything. And that's just what happens when you're 15. And when you are small enough to listen, my old man said, look, dude, let me tell you something. When you see that ball doing like this, what does that mean? I said, it means that uh, there's a curve roll up ahead. Well, why do you keep running the walls that I say that are out there? And I said, I haven't ran in no walls. My car is fine. I haven't, I haven't wrecked anything. He said, you ain't listening. What is that? What I told you about that road? What is that? It means there's a curve. Why would you believe a sign that you don't even know who painted it? And I'm telling you what to do and I'm feeding you every day. The light went on to my life. I said, I'm gonna listen to this guy. Yeah. It, it started to make it start to make sense. So I don't know when you're gonna plug into the Lord. I hope you plugged in now. But if you just say, give God a chance, right? If you just say, Lord, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna try to follow you. I'm going to tie. I know I have to get my tips up. Money. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Just try it. Yeah. Yeah. Just try yeah. it. You know, I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray for who? I'm going to pray for my family, my loved one. You know, I, I've got to you see, you to pray. Anybody can do that. you got to pray for your enemies to him. Yeah. 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 Yesterday morning, me and Mike was on the phone. Praying for the guy who shot Michael McBride. Praying for the guy who shot Crawford. Praying for the guys who have done it. Why are we doing it? Because God said to do it. Right. Scott. If you want the Lord to respond to you in your life, hold on to his precept. Do what he says. Or try to do what he says. So, I'm telling you that road, uh, people who seek righteousness do not uh, convince themselves that what is happening with road cops uh, in America is uh, is not true or is illegitimate. They believe, they don't believe that what's happening in Ferguson is insignificant. People who love the Lord believe that what's happening in Ferguson is significant. The children of God uh, do not tell the victims of road cops that it's just an anomaly or an aberration right. or a, uh, a one-time event. Right. No, you can connect the dots. That's another thing that offends me. I'm a reader, and I, and, I, and I read and I know the history. Don't tell me this only happened. It only it just recently happened. No, it's been happening for decades. Right, right, right. over here in North Oakland, where I was uh, raised at on 56th Street. Uh, Bobby Hutton lived on 56th and Market. Uh, Bobby Seals. Uh, uh, lived on 57. You and you lived on 58. Yeah. Right here in North Oakland, right? You less than five miles from here that the Black Panther Party uh, uh, was instituted. Why was it instituted? It was the Black Panther Party of self defense because the Oakland Police Department was chasing us all over the place. And if they caught us, you got whooped. You, got, you couldn't even go on the other side of Telegraph Avenue. Anybody in North Oakland know Bush Rock? Any old basketball players in there? Okay, I was a basketball player, so we lived at the gym with Bush Rock on 59th, right? In Shattuck. We can go up to the park, but if you went up to Telegraph, oh, it was on. And they would sweep down, swoop down on you, grab you, slap you, punch you, kick you, and then let you go home. So don't tell me this ain't just started. This thing been happening for decades. Bobby Hutton gave his life for this thing. You and you, you know, died because of this thing. This destruction and this hatred for black men amazes me. And I hear some black folks and some black men, oh no, that's not what the situation is. Now I can't talk to them anymore. Come on. <laughs> talk. I'm too old for that. So what is the shield of faith? The faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith can be reasoned. But often, faith is illogical. Right. I mean, uh, God takes the bigger things of the world. The first should be last. Right. And the last should be first. Now, after you're dealing with a situation and you're employing your faith to get through it, and there's an amelioration, means it got better. Sometimes when you assess, what happened? Was it my money? 
No. Was it my connections? No. no. Was it our combined uh, academic achievements? No. Was it who we knew? No. What was it? It was because Mama Big Mama was in there praying. She didn't pray it out. Mama just had to death. That is what, that's how faith works. Right. That's how faith works. Right. Celestine, that's my mother, used to wake us up in the middle of the night, put that oil on my face. Oh, Mama. I'm trying to sing. Lord, bless my child. Bless my child. And so they get up and we laugh and tease her all the time. And then under the bed, it would be prayer cloths and, and Bible verses. And we were going like, oh, Lord, have mercy. But you know what? It got me to be 65 years old. I believe that. Thank you, Mother. So I'm telling you, faith is a, a remarkable thing. You have to diligently seek the Lord. And you cannot be afraid. You cannot be afraid. In Revelation 2.10, Jesus says, God prepares us by saying to us, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. You need to tell me if I follow this Jesus thing, I'm going to suffer something. Yes, there's a cross for you and there's a cross for me. Everybody going to bear some of this burden. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? No, no, not at all. I tell you, the devil, he says in the verse, that I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison and test you uh, for 10 days. Be careful, even to the point of death, and I will give you your victor's crown. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this crown we're talking about? In Greek, the crown is called the Stephanos crown. There are two crowns. Stephanos crown and the diadem crown. The Stephanos crown is what we yearn for. When we live this life, and uh, we, we, we make it to the other side, we get a crown. What did you say? Oh, Reggie, if I did something well, Reggie, that's another jewel in your crown. That's how she was. That's another jewel in the crown. We look at each other. Me and my brother, she talked. A jewel. A jewel. Why can't you get a crown now? Well, that's what the Bible said. Now, that diadem crown, that's what they were judging that come. When they crown him, crown him, Lord and Lord. Yeah, that's good. King of kings. That's the diadem. So there's two crowns. But we can't be, we can understand that faith requires you to pursue righteousness even unto death. Yeah. Mark stood up there and said, Think, uh, he been to the mountaintop. <laughs> yeah. And he peered over to the other side. Yeah. And he said, I'm not afraid of no man. He meant that. I'm not afraid of no man. Long life is wonderful. Everybody wants to uh, enjoy that. But I, I can see the coming, the marking of the coming of the Lord. I'm telling you, that's where we are right now. Yeah. Don't be afraid to follow Christ. And the salvation, the helmet of salvation, is what you think, what you believe, what you think is doctrine. Jesus says, if you hold on to my teaching, you will really be my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Yeah. John 8, 31. The true salvation through Christ does indeed set us free. Yeah. It set us free from meaningless temptation. It set us free from this wandering and searching for something to satisfy us and we can't find it. Right. Sex can't do it. Money can't do it. Party can't do it. New shoes can't do it. Right. New clothes. Vacation can't do it. Right. I'm the empty. I don't know what it is that, that will, can't make me satisfied. I'm with a group of guys and I'm looking around and I ain't happy. I'm over here at the party. They have fun. I'm not having none. The Lord is calling you out. Right. You need to understand that and not be afraid of it. That is the truth. That's the salvation plan. Lastly, the word says we're supposed to pray without pray, excuse me, pray without ceasing at all times for all of the saints. The word is, like I said, ask us to pray for our loved ones and our enemies. So I like to pray. For you and with you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, give us courage to live, really live, not merely exist. Let us live dangerously, scorning the risk, because you are our protector. You are our way maker. You are our shield. You are our banner, Almighty God. Let us live honestly, daring the truth, daring to know the truth, even the particular truths about ourselves. Let us live resilient.
resiliently, never and forever changing, ever growing, ever adapting, enduring the pain of change as though we were a woman in the travails of birth. Give me the courage and give us the courage to live. Give us the strength to be free, to endure, to endure the burden of freedom and the loneliness of being free and the chains that sometimes some of us may have to bear. Let us not be trapped by success, nor influenced by failure, nor drink the narcotics of pleasure, nor grief, nor malice. Don't let praise turn our head or remorse. Lord, and we know that you overcome that. You said, oh grave, oh, oh death, where's your sting? Grave. Where's your victory? So give us the courage to go on, to face all that is waiting for us. Because we know we're walking with you, Lord. We know you have our back in every other place around us. Top, bottom, front, side. You are the God of all gods. Yeah. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. You are our Savior. You are our Keeper. You are our resurrection in our lives. Lord, we love you. We love you. And Lord, let me just say this in the name of Jesus. Touch Ben right now in the name of Jesus. Touch Michael right now in the name of Jesus. Bless their bodies and their hands and their, their bodies, their hair, their feet, every car they get in, they can be a safe car. Every phone call they make, Lord, they can be a safe phone call. Lord, bless their wives and their children. Let there not be any rancor among any of them. Lord, we know you have called them out and used them. We know they are your razor, Lord. Let them cut clean and fine. Yeah. And when they try to explain something, let the people of the world listen. Let that vice president listen. Let that vice president hear what's being told to him. Almighty oh God. Yeah. Now, Lord, when it's all said and done, it is my time to go and cannot stay. I ask that you meet me by the river. So I can walk with my kinfolk forever and every day. And praise your holy name. This is my name.